Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The title of today's lesson is The Rejection of Our Sacrifices. Once again, today's title is in today's lesson is entitled The Rejection of Our Sacrifices. Many have asked the questions, well, you know, are we able to sacrifice in the many nations that we're in? That's number one. Number two is how come if you keep all these laws like you say, then how come you can't offer up a sacrifice? So many people are not aware of why we are unable to, uh, to offer a sacrifice. Number one, we cannot do it unless we're in the land. This is a place that the Most High have chosen. It's a specific place in which we can do this. Moreover, as we've been scattered into these lands on punishment for over 2,000 years, two days, the Most High have totally rejected us uh, to this point for that time period until he had put his spirit back onto us and therefore uh, no sacrifice were accepted and the Most High said when we lifted our hands in prayer that he wouldn't hear us because we didn't hear him. So anyway, <clears throat> brace yourselves, tighten up your jaws, don't turn to the left or to the right or you will get hit in the mouth. We are to walk the straight and narrow way of the Most High's commandments. So now, Let's look at the why the Most High rejected the sacrifices from the house of Israel and turned his back upon us. The reason why he did this, we turned our back on him. Now let's start with Isaiah chapter 1. We will read the entire chapter of Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1 reads, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings, correct term, governors of Judah. Verse 2, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for Yah has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. So the Most High is speaking of his children. His children is not everyone on the face of the earth. His children are the house of Israel. That is his sons and his daughters. Verse 3, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Everyone is not the people of the Most High. The people of the Most High is the house of Israel. We are the sons and the daughters of the Most High. We are the apple of his eye. Now, an ox knoweth his owner. He is stating that our wisdom is so far removed, we're like donkeys just about. Silly. And if you look at the nations in which we dwell and you look at our, at our actions, we act as though we are a bunch of dummies. Okay, our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding has been removed. Verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, sin, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken Yah. They have provoked the Holy One, Holy One, not two or three, the Holy One of Israel, unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Why so? They have walked contrary towards His instruction. Verse 5. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart is faint. So the Most High is inflicting these whippings upon us, these corrections upon us, and the more he does it, the more we rebel. Verse 6, For the sole of the foot, even unto the head, from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises, and petrifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. So we are a wounded people is what that means. We continue to take these weapons uh, and we refuse to take correction. So because we will not take correction, we cannot be healed. Through these weapons, through these stripes, we are supposed to be healed. But the more weapons we get, the sores and the wounds remain untreated because we refuse to adhere to correction. Verse 7. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers, devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Strangers take over the land. You're at the bottom of the barrel of the land. It is your land. You're paying taxes in your land, etc. 
Okay, other people are taking advantage of things that belongs to you. This is what has happened to the house of Israel. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Number nine, except that Yah of hosts had left unto us a small remnant, we should have been a Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Of course, Sodom and Gomorrah were both destroyed, but the Most High had mercy upon Israel and left us a remnant. He did not destroy us all. Verse 10, hear the word of Yah. Ye rulers of Sodom, give ear unto the law of our strong one, ye people of Gomorrah. Verse 11, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? So the Most High is saying, all these sacrifices that you're bringing before me, what is the purpose of it? Okay, so verse 11 once again. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Saith Yah, I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. So the Most High is becoming terribly disgusted of us bringing these sacrifices onto him and they're not done in sincerity. We're bringing before him lame animals. We're bringing contemptible things before him, okay? Uh, and we're not giving the best of our flock to him. We're cheating the most high is what we're doing here. We're half-stepping with our sacrifices, okay? And when we're doing it, we're not doing it in sincerity of heart. Verse 12, when ye come to appear before me, who hath required this? at your hand to tread my courts. Verse 13, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even to the solemn meetings. So the solemn meetings and the Sabbaths and the new moons, etc., etc., the Most High was having enough of it because we continue to do all the things that were abominations unto him. So he's pretty much getting fed up with us, and he's pretty much getting ready to cut us off like he said that he would. Verse 14, your new moons and your appointed feast my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Most High getting real sick and tired of the house of Israel. Verse 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, once again, when we pray, this is not how you do it. Okay, when we pray, we spread forth our hands. So here's the Most High responding to, he is so tired of us, he's letting us know when we decide to pray to him, he's not going to hear it. Verse 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea. When ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. So in Zion, in Jerusalem, in the Holy Land, we were taking bribes, half-stepping with the sacrifices, marrying strange women, and doing all the things that we were clearly instructed not to do at the first. And we began to walk contrary to instruction that we were given at the first. And so, therefore, this is why we have all these problems. Verse 16, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. What is evil? Anything that walks contrary to the Most High's law. Anything that walks contrary to the instruction that we were given at the first. Verse 17, learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Verse 18, come now and let us reason together, saith Yah. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verse 19, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of Yah hath spoken it. So the Most High is letting us know here simply a few things. Number one, come let us reason together. Let me tell you exactly what that simply means. Look, I've given you some instructions. All you have to do, Israel, is return back unto them, and you shall be blessed and have all these benefits that I have promised unto you. This is the reasoning, okay? 
The reasoning is, look what you're going through right now. Look at the hurt, the pain, and the stripes in which you're experiencing in the many nations and the affliction. The reasoning is simple. Look at what is happening to you. Look at what's happening to your children. Look at what has happened to your foreparents before you. Consider it carefully. Look at these laws and see if this makes sense to you. If you can identify yourself as the house of Israel. And if it does, then what you are to do is simple. We have to be willing and obedient and we can eat the good of the land. But we can't eat the good of the land unless we return back onto the land, which means we must return back onto the Most High's laws. But the Most High said clearly, if we refuse to do this, we will be devoured with the sword. That's why we're in these many nations being killed. Because that's what the Most High had said. That was the evil that was pronounced against the house of Israel. Verse 21. How is the faithful city becoming harlot, a whore, worshiping after idols? It was full of judgment. It was full of the Most High's law. Righteousness, the Most High's law. Lodged in it, but now murders. Verse 22. Thy silver is become dross. Thy wine mixed with water. We are polluted. We are watered down. We are a fraction of what we're supposed to be. Verse 23. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. So, if we look in the many nations in which we dwell right now, those who are in leadership, they are crooks. And that's why they disappoint us. They do not walk after the Most High's law, and they love gifts. Okay? Our enemies have actually bought and paid for those who claim to be our leaders. They are compromised. They will not speak on our behalf. Never have, never will. Because they have received gifts. Okay, they're in the companion of thieves and murderers and liars. They are paid opposition. And some of us mistaken them to be our leaders. They are not. Verse 24. Therefore, therefore saith Yah, strong one of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. Verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away all the tin. Dross. When you're actually dealing with metals, i.e. precious metals such as gold, okay, it goes through a refining process. All right? And that which is useless within that refining process is what's known as dross. So what the Most High is going to do, he's going to take away all the uselessness from us. In other words, he's going to refine us and try us as gold is tried. And that is a process. That way we can take out all the impurities all right, of it. And that's the dross. And you could consider the dross to be the rebels. All right? Now, uh, let me see where we are here. Uh, verse 26. Now restore thy judges as at the first. Let me reread that. You have heard me state in many lessons before that when this is all said and done, we will re return back to the way things were at the first. The way things were at the first, when the Most High dwelt in the midst of his people, in the land of Israel, in his temple, in his tabernacle prior to the temple, we are going back to those days. So you understand that. And there is no democracy back then. Most High doesn't tolerate you having a choice. You don't have a choice. It's his way or no way. So you understand that clearly. So let me repeat verse 26 of Isaiah chapter 1. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. You need to go back in the book to find out where the beginning is. Afterwards, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. We have read in Ezekiel, once that third temple is built, sacrifices put on and the Levites put back in his place, that that city is going to be called the city of righteousness, pretty much. Okay, it's going to be called Yah is there. This is speaking to that point. All right, so you understand that you're not dying going to heaven. All right, so you understand that clearly. The heaven or uh, the the uh, the holy city 
is here on earth, Jerusalem, Zion, where the Most High will dwell in the midst of his people forever. Now, uh, verse 27, Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts, her converts with righteousness. Judgment and righteousness is the law. And the convert, the convert, converts, what they are, they're converting from wickedness to righteousness. This is the house of Israel who have returned back onto the Most High's law and have taken all these idols and dropped them. Okay, so the converts are not, you know, anything other than those who are of the house of Israel who have denounced wickedness idol worship, etc., and have returned back onto the laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts that we were given at the first. That's what the converts are, to be clear. Verse 28, And the destruction of the transgressors, evildoers, sinners, idolaters, and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake, the, and they that forsake Yah shall be con consumed. How do you forsake the Most High? Very simple. Those who forsake the Most High are those who will not adhere to His law, period. Okay? So the Most High is letting us know clearly here in this chapter, He has rejected our sacrifices, number one. Okay? He's letting us know that He's going to restore our judges as things were at the first, our judges and our counselors. He's letting us know that Zion, that city, that holy city, will re be redeemed with judgment. That's His law. And the converts thereof with righteousness, that's his law. That's why you always hear me say, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. It is forever, it's unchangeable. Okay? And you read in verse 28, The destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake Yah shall be consumed. Walking contrary to his law, he's going to kill you. Verse 29, For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired. And ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. Those who choose to walk after the idols of these many nations, you will be made ashamed for this. Once it's all said and done, and it's proven to you before your very eyes, because the Most High has to repay you to your face that you're in idolatry, you're going to be ashamed for this. You're going to be made to look foolish. It's pretty much what this is saying here. Now, verse 30, for ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water, parched, dried, desolate. Okay, verse 31, and the strong shall be as a toe, and the maker of it, of it as a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. So if you are in idolatry in these nations, walking after these many idols, going into these quote-unquote church houses, which are nothing but houses unto devils, houses unto idols, for the Most High only had one temple in one place, one spot, and both of those temples were destroyed. So if you're walking after this idol, number one, you will be made greatly ashamed. And... You will be considered an evildoer, a transgressor, and the Most High saying you all will be destroyed together to make that clear. So you understand clearly now why the Most High is not accepting any sacrifices from us, okay? Because we have turned our backs on Him, so He became quite tired of us. He will redeem us. We turn and chuck His law behind our back again, redeem us again, chuck the law aside again. We're taken into captivity here, there, and everywhere, and we still will not consider this and return back onto this law. Now, let's turn to Malachi chapter 1. Malachi chapter 1. Malachi is the last prophet. There are no prophets after Malachi. When you turn to Malachi, at the end of Malachi, you see something that says the New Testament. New means something that has never been seen or used before. It's unheard of. Testament. Testament and testimony means truth. The truth doesn't get old, new, or different. The truth simply is. That's why I've proven to you in previous videos 
that this New Testament on the first page is a bold-faced lie, not a misprint, but a lie. Now, Matthew chapter 1, excuse me, not Matthew, I was looking at Matthew, that's why I said that, oh, craziness. Anyway, now, Malachi, the very last prophet of the Most High, Malachi chapter 1. Let's read that. Pertaining to the Most High rejecting the sacrifices that was that was presented to the house of Israel because we were offering all manner of foul animals up to the Most High that we were not supposed to. Now, let's read verse 1 of Malachi chapter 1. The burden of the word of Yah by Israel, to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yah, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yah, yet I loved Jacob. So it's expressed clearly here that the Most High loved Jacob. Now, verse 3, and I hated Esau. So if you ever thought that the Most High cannot hate, he's telling you here he hated Esau. Now, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Verse 4, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. But we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yah of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yah hath indignation forever. So, Edom was kicked out, and Edom said clearly, They will return and build a desolate waste. If you look in the land of Israel now, there are places that the Most High had caused Ezekiel to look at and to curse, to make the place bare. To where the trees had disappeared and it pretty much had been like almost like desert land. So what the people in the land that are calling themselves Israelis are doing, they're trying to plant trees in these desolate places, trying to bring alive the land. It's going to be a tough call because the Most High caused Ezekiel to curse these, these many different areas of Israel to where pretty much nothing is going to grow. But they're trying to go with plants and trees and try to plant and bring the, light, the land back to life. That's not going to happen. They're also building. They're building all these settlements. Okay, so they have returned to the land. They're building all types of settlements, but the Most High said he will throw down. So we're looking for that. Verse 5, And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, Y'all will be magnified from the borders of Israel. Of course you will. He said clearly that the law will go forth from Zion and that all the nations will have to go up to his house and ask to be taught of his law. So, yes, he will be magnified from the border of Israel. Verse 6, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, then where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? saith Yah of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? So he's speaking to the priest, letting the priest know that they have despised his name. And the priest is saying, The Levites, because you can't be a, you can't be a priest unless you're of the Le Levitical house, uh, of the Levit Levitical line, specifically of Aaron. The priest is saying, Well, you know, how do how do we despise your name? Okay? Verse 7. And the Most High is going to get specific. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, the table of Yah is contemptible. Verse 8. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? So the Most High is asking these priests, hey, if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? So we were not to bring a lame lamb, a blind lamb, etc., etc., for any type of sacrifices, sin offerings, etc. We were to bring the best of the flock. It was to be a male of the first year without blemish. So the house of Israel got to the point to where we looked in the flock and be like, you know what? Man, that's my best lamb right there. I'm not going to give him up. Get that one over there with a crooked leg. We'll take him up. That's Israel. We started doing some underhanded things, okay? Uh, and in so doing, we were cheating the Most High and we were cheating ourselves, unbeknownst to us. Or we should have known because we were given this law at the first. 
Anyway, let's reread verse 8. And if he offered a blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if he offered a lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. The governor at this time is Nehemiah. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person? Of course not. Okay, verse 9. And now I pray you, beseech Yah, that he would be gracious unto us. This has been by your means. Will he regard your persons, saith Yah of hosts? Verse 10. Who is there, even among you, that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle fire on my altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith Yah of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. So, <clears throat> Most High is speaking to the priest here. Okay? He's speaking to the priest, but he's also speaking to the house of Israel as a whole. So you're seeing here where the priest, okay, and the house of Israel, because the house of Israel take the sacrifices up to the priest. All right? So if the priest is offering a lame animal, a blind animal, it is something that was offered up by the people. So the priest, who are the Most High's direct servants, should know better to even take that up to people, let alone take it and then offer it up to the Most High. Okay? It's an evil thing. All right? So the Most High is saying here, I have no pleasure in you, saith the Avos, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. That is verse 10 of Malachi chapter 1. So the Most High is saying he's not taking any offerings, sacrifices over. He doesn't want it. Okay? Verse 11. For from the rising of the sun, even up to going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Meaning, even in the midst of all the other nations, the Most High will have a great name. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the of host. So, the Most High's name will not only be great in the midst of the house of Israel, it will be great even in the midst of the heathen. For the Most High is the God of the whole earth. So you understand that. Now, verse, verse 12. But ye have profaned it, that's his holy name, in that ye say the table of Yah is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat is contemptible. Verse 13. Ye said, Behold, what a weariness is it, and ye have snuffed at it, saith Yah of hosts, and ye brought that which was torn, and the lame and the sick. Thus he brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand? So we have brought lame, sick, and torn, injured. So we're bringing injured animals, blind animals, sick animals, lame, crippled, you name it. We're bringing it up to the Most High, offering it up to the priest, for the priest to offer it up on our behalf, and the priest is actually taking these things and trying to take it before the Most High on his altar. You know that's not going to fly. So if you ever wonder why we are unable to make any sacrifices, why there is no temple right now, why the Most High causes his holy name to be polluted and his inheritance to be polluted, why he causes his house to be destroyed, why he causes people to be scattered to the four corners of the earth, we're reading this right now. <clears throat> All right? Now, verse 14, But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrifices unto Yah a corrupt thing. All right, we are supposed to offer a male of the first year without blemish up for our offerings. <clears throat> All right, so now, what the man of Israel did, well, you know what? I'm not going to offer my best, like I've described before earlier in this video. So we started half-stepping with our sacrifices. We didn't want to offer our best. All right? We wanted to keep it for ourselves. So we have, in essence, transgressed the first instruction that we got. We shall put no other God before the Most High. In other words, we should not put anything before the Most High. So when we look at our flock and we see the best of our flock, and we do not want to offer it up for sacrifice as we are commanded to. We want to keep it for ourselves. Thus, we have broken the first commandment. We have put ourselves before the Most High. That can get us in a whole lot of trouble. That's why we're here. 
Once again, verse 14. Mosai said he's going to curse that deceiver, which has in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrifices unto Yah a corrupt thing, something that's blind, lip, crippled, lame, etc. For I am a great king, say Yah of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. All right. That is Isaiah chapter 1, Malachi chapter 1. So you understand clearly why we are unable to make any sacrifices in the midst of these nations. The Most High chose a specific place where we can make our sacrifices. It was not in these many lands. That specific place is in Israel. Okay? And that is to be offered up specifically to his priest. What we're not to do is cut off the head of anything. Okay? Matter of fact, if we did that, we're going to be severely punished for it because the Most High is not accepting any sacrifices. And no man of Israel can cleanse his own sin by offering up his own sacrifice. It doesn't work that way. It first must go through the Levites. The Levites are the intercessors for the house of Israel. And by way of the Levites, specifically the sons of Aaron, they are the only ones that's allowed to touch those holy things and to deal with the Most High's altar, both of them, the altar of incense as well as the altar of burnt sacrifices. All right, so once we return back into the land, once that temple is built, sacrifices put on, and those holy waters come out of that temple to heal the earth, okay, then at that place which the Most High chose is where he will accept our sacrifices once he's brought us back from these many lands and he will cleanse our blood, etc. Okay? But those things cannot be done until we return back onto the land. So that is the specific reason why the Most High does not accept any sacrifices from the house of Israel because we were bringing lame animals before him. We were cheating him. Okay? And therefore the Most High said, I'm going to send you to these many lands since you want to walk after the gods of these many people and you want to be like your enemies so much. I'm going to ship you out to them. And thus we are at the four corners of the earth, scattered, confused, wearing the names of those who have oppressed us, speaking the languages of those who have oppressed us, walking after the customs of those who have oppressed us, and taking a hold of the gods of those who have oppressed us. We are a confused people with shame of face. We are the house of Israel. And to return unto the Most High will take all that we have seen over the generations and the killings that we can see, continue to see today if we return back unto the Most High's law simply by humbling ourselves, He will take all of this and make it go away. But we have to trust in that. And it's easier to trust in it if first you read this book of remembrance and you understand it. And once you understand it, you can look around and bear witness to it, not only what you see today, but what has happened and transpired over the centuries then it makes it easier for you to make a full commitment to it. Anyway, Israel, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Stay in the Most High's law. Let's continue to lift our hands in prayer, facing Jerusalem, and give the Most High no rest, that he may return and gather us out of these many nations and get us out of this mess. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless.